Is, I mean, what, what did happen? Um, the lady phoned me up to say that she had, I think it was about 20 rabbits. Usual story, got a few bred. She said by accident, but hey. Um, could I take some? So she's Bristol based anyway, so I said, right, in that case, you can take them down for neutering um, on our account um, to our vets and then you can bring them one out here. So I think the plan was to do four or five this morning to straight to vets but they just phoned us now to say they've all failed their uh, dental checks. They've all got dental disease. She ended up apparently only taking two instead of the big number so she started to bottle out. Um, she's now saying she's going to come and fetch them from vets rather than them be put to sleep. Now my concern is she's not coping with what she had, that's why she phoned me. Um, and now she's going to take these two away. Chances are I don't think there's a lot of money around. These are not going to get treated, they're not going to get their teeth filed down. So I've alerted the vets to say you, you've got to have a word. I mean what happens with, I suppose, rabbits when obviously dental disease or dental problems are allowed to continue? Well it, it depends on how bad it is. Some of them can live with a very mild dental disease and it actually doesn't bother them at all. Um, a lot of cases it develops not only if you've got the spurs sort of sticking into the tongue or sticking into the cheek, they get abscesses along the jawline, um, osteomyelitis and of course that's very very painful. Having had an abscess in my jaw I can fully understand what a rabbit feels. Um, they can't eat and the litter will starve to death. So it's something that's extremely serious, it's not curable. You can, as you know, you've seen me clipping back the teeth um, as an emergency situation, but it's ongoing, it doesn't cure. Once you've done it once, the chances are very high you'll have to do it again. Of course, nowadays, one doesn't tend to clip. They're knocked out, they're anaesthetised, they're burrowed down, it's all quite different nowadays. So for somebody to keep that going, it's probably going to cost them, if they're going every six weeks, £100 a month or something. It's a lot of money. And people just don't want to take on rabbits like that. And so my concern with this lady, um, she's obviously got a lot of rabbits now with dental disease. She wasn't coping before. They're obviously breeding. I think she's new to one male. But there's obviously others yeah. if there's about 20 rabbits. So I am very concerned that this is a situation that's going to go from bad to worse. So I'm hoping they, they're going to have a word with her. Um, maybe they will have to send an inspector in. What, was she intending to rehome them or was it just a... The intention was to rehome quite a few. When I said to her on the phone about the dental problems um, and the issues, she suddenly started backtracking very, very quickly. Now normally in that situation I wouldn't even mention it. If it's an overrun situation and, and rabbits aren't getting cared for, I wouldn't even mention dentals. We get them in, the vets assess them and we go from there. But with her, because she's Bristol based and I couldn't take them unless she did the ferry and around to the vets and then bring them out to me, the situation was a bit different. So I kind of shot myself in the foot a little bit with that one. <laughs> what can you do? So if, I mean, what's, uh, what's our general procedure with dental? If they are found to have dental disease and I've read the book to sleep. There is nothing else we can do. Mm. Um, there are one or two exceptions. Sometimes someone will phone me, especially sometimes vet me now, say, I've got a, a house rabbit, for example, and this, that was the latest one. She's got a house rabbit who had dental problems. She's had a, the teeth taken out of it. Perfect house rabbit, couldn't chew anything because it had no front teeth. Fantastic. She wanted another house rabbit to go with it. She had neutered female, she wanted neutered male. Um, but she said, I'm happy with the dental disease rabbit because. You know, if the teeth have to be removed, fantastic. You know, they make perfect uh, companions in the house because they can't chew. Um, obviously, they've got back teeth still, but no front teeth in that particular case. So there was a case where I was just waiting for my next dental rabbit to come in, and I knew it would have a home if they got on with, with their own. So occasionally, there is a happy ending, but most of the time, I'm afraid there isn't. Well, this is a part of the neutering run preparation that most people obviously don't see. Um, it takes me probably about two hours. Um, I need to identify the rabbits that have got to go down for nutrient. I'm only allowed a certain number um, to send down because when our rabbits go down to our vets we take over them. It's the RSPC in Bristol who are fantastic. Um, we're only allowed to send down a maximum number of ten generally plus two maybe for dental checks. So I've got to carefully work out um, who are important ones to go down on, on that day. Um, and it's all got to be labelled up, so I do my labels for the carriers, there's, there's little um, pouches on each carrier. 
and um, all the labels got to be made up, um, what's in the carrier, description of the rabbit, so if somebody gets muddled they can look at the rabbit and know who, who it is, because that has happened in the past. Um, the age of the rabbit, any relevant details on what I want doing, so for example this first one's going to be two males, description, their age, that they've to be castrated, and they've to have their myxomatosis and VHD jab. So, that basically goes on to these cards. I then cut it up. You don't have a fancy machine, it's just me and scissors. Um, cut it up and that goes on the carriers, um, ready for tomorrow, because it's nutrient run tomorrow. Now accompanying that has got to be the letter, all colour-coded, um, which again, more or less reiterates what I've got on the carrier cards, but it's for the nurses to have a look at. And of course there's the money angle because it costs every time we send a rabbit down for new trunks. So I've got to work all that out, how much for teeth checking, how much for um, vaccinations. I mean, in this particular case, the vaccination is going to cost us £240. So the whole new run tomorrow is going to be £489 um, for one new run. Um, and I also put on there the date for the next new run. So that's, it, it's all, and I say, this can take two hours easily. I Just yeah. preparing. Yeah. yeah. I suppose that's why um, sort of donations and things are so important because Absolutely. of those, you know, yeah. those costs. Because it does cost so much. It costs to... a lot, and this is them giving us um, a discount, you know, mm. a significant discount. Otherwise, we we couldn't exist, to be perfectly honest. But as I say, four hundred eighty nine pound for for one nutrient run, and it's possible some of these won't come back. But we still naturally are charged because we've got to anaesthetise the rabbit anyway to check the teeth. So we will still get charged, um, quite rightly, because they're using the materials and using their time. But that means we spent out and we haven't got a rabbit then um, to, you know, um, to put up for adoption. So it, although it's a charity, it's got to be run almost like a business, because if I don't, we run out of funding and we close. So that's, that's why it's done like this, it's got to be efficiently run. And the next stage, of course, is going to get the carriers. So how long roughly does it take to actually organise, you know, everything with the, the neutering run? Um, well, a couple of hours for paperwork, um, then we've got to get the carriers ready, they've all got to be made up and newspaper in. And then on the morning, of course, I've got to catch all the rabbits and put them in the right carriers. <laughs> and what time do you have to get up to, to get all that done? Early. <laughs> <laughs> Too early. I always keep up anyway for the guinea pigs. So. Yeah. And obviously that's where we are now, isn't it? The guinea pig shed. Yeah, it's all nice this and is warm. the guinea pig, uh, guinea pig section. We have got some emergency rabbits in here at the minute because we're so full, but um, that will be resolved after tomorrow. They'll all be in their proper places. Yeah, again, this is really just meant for guinea pigs, but until we get the rabbit numbers down a little bit. Yeah. But she did come from somebody who was breeding for showing that the owners become ill. Yeah. And they need to move on 20, 20 show rabbits. She was one of them. She's an older bunny. So she's actually used to living in a cage, which was significantly smaller than what she's in now. But I still don't like rabbits being hutched like this, but it is better than what she was in and as soon as we can we'll get her up into the rabbit section so she's got a lot more room she's got funny little legs hasn't she she has yes she's wondering why we haven't fed her <laughs> i see I she's been she. busy with the door <laughs> <laughs> that's uh hmm. often we put um we put bits and i'm gonna have to screw a piece of wood onto the door oh you've got so many things to play you've got baskets and branches and toys and <laughs> no i haven't it's all a lie <laughs> yes but you'd rather have the door Some of the carriers ready for tomorrow's neutron run. They've all got their cards on them telling you who's in for what. There's another three carriers still to come up from the other end, but uh, it's going to be quite a busy run, I think.
And that's all set for the first thing tomorrow morning. Well, it's a very cold neutering day morning. Um, I've got the carriers all set up. What I do is I put their um, allocation of veg in there so they've got what they normally would have in the morning uh, to go down to the vets with them. You can see we've already got some bunnies in there. My obligatory cup of hot chocolate which keeps me going on a cold winter morning. Very, very heavy frost. So quite a few of the catches are actually uh, almost frozen this morning. Uh, it's now about half past six and uh, it'll only take me about ten minutes now to get the rest of the rabbits in and then our volunteer uh, will be here, who's Damon this morning, bless him, and he'll be taking them into Bristol for their neutering ops. They'll be back again today, probably about half past four, half past five. Quite a long day for everybody really. But it means that this chap here will be able to match him up with a neutered female once he's recovered. So. It's all worth it. I don't know if they think that way. Is, is there a kind of a element of anxiety in what's going to come back or...? Yeah, yes I suppose. Yeah, we, we sent down 16 this morning. Um, we know sadly two are definitely not coming back because they've got dental disease and the vets I'm sure will confirm that. We'll wait and see but I think it's unlikely they'll come back. So we'll have to wait and see how many others do because sometimes we get them all back, sometimes we don't get many back. So we'll wait and see what happens. But it was very cold this morning. So uh, and we're waiting around again in the cold now. It's about half past four. So we'll be back any minute, I hope, and we'll see, see what returns. It's a very long day. It is a very long day. <laughs> it's hanging about waiting. I've got all the heated pads in the cages now. So get them nice and warm for them coming back because they come back from the warm vets in a warm car mm. into the outside not good well, i suppose that just shows how cold it is that the uh, the shed that was delivered the snow that was on it from nottingham has survived yes. all the way through the day and is still there yes our central <laughs> box shed to replace our little shed in the corner yes yes about three inches of snow on that. yeah uh, and occasionally I suppose we get some that we're not expecting to get back at all, occasionally. <laughs> occasionally we'll get a surprise rabbit, yeah. yeah. Um, but they generally will phone and say, um, if you're having any surprises, they'll phone and say, have you got room for? Mm. And we haven't got room for, so I'm hoping we'll not have any surprises <laughs> at all. Uh, but we'll wait and see. Wait and see. Siobhan will be any minute. What do you think is the most interesting thing that's, uh, I suppose, come back that you weren't expecting, even if it's not a rabbit? Uh, well, Cuthbert, I suppose, or uh, a resident. Our yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't yes. expecting that at all. Well, I was expecting a pigeon, hmm. um, and the lady kept saying it was a white dove, so I was expecting a straight tailed, you know, pigeon, but no, it was a phantom. So I don't know where that came from, she just found it in the bush. As you do. As you do. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, all the way from Nottingham, <laughs> that is, yeah. These came back. Oh, yes. Both of those. Oh, good, good. Hello. How are you feeling? Hey. Not very good. Never mind, you're back home. Well, they were originally in together, and then of course you split them up. Yeah, so 
they might as well because otherwise he's going to be on his own when it's yeah. really cold even though I've got heated pad in a way yeah. and it's not the same no. No. you get somebody to snuggle up to yeah that's right that's right This is the next uh, the next stage. Once the rabbits are all put away, is is putting all the folding up all the carriers and cleaning them up with the new cleaning and stacking them all for next time. So that's the next job. I suppose generally, how did it? How did we do? Um, I'm disappointed actually. I am disappointed because we didn't get the Dutch back. Um, who else didn't we get back? One of the young uh, females that we sent down. Um, with her brother, she hasn't returned. Um, and the little mini lop, Lola, she hasn't come back. And so, yeah, I am a bit despondent. But the positives is we can get the rabbits out of the emergency section now, um, back into the proper rabbit section. So I suppose silver lining. <laughs> Hello, puppet. You're going to come up. Uh, she's one of the batch of show rabbits or ex show rabbits that we had come in so she was used to living in a quite a small cage in the shed so actually coming to the big outside world may not fill her with joy I don't know but you have more room yeah you're rather nice you're probably thinking put me down this is horrible And we've got another one coming up far too soon, haven't we, really? Yeah, another neutering run. Because of these emergency ones we, we had in, this one was meant to go down today, but of course uh, she went down the queue again because some of the females that came in on Saturday are at high risk of pregnancy. So I'm afraid she was uh, shunted down the queue, but she'll definitely go on the 7th of February. Get those boots off. Oh, then I'm not getting the camera. They're really no Right, hello, this is Ben, who uh, is usually behind the camera. We've decided that it's going to have to be desperate measures. We're getting the wheelbarrow to actually move the snow elsewhere because there's just so much of it. It's actually ridiculous. I've never seen it th quite this heavy in this area. <laughs> Does, of course, mean that there's an awful lot of work. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. Ah. Oh dear, it's uh, very snowy. Yes, it is. <laughs> Shall I take that? You're right. No, I'm okay. Okay, I'll be able to 
<laughs> yes, yeah. Death by wheelbarrow, no. Yeah, saying, well, it's always very fun having the snow here. It's um, quite a lot of work. Yeah, that's the trouble. It makes it all impractical, even just getting down to the hay shed. Yes. A trial. I mean, looking at the uh, at how much has just is stacked on top of the grass. I mean, the usually we've got the borders around the plants, and that's just completely vanished. Yeah, it's gone. Well, I'm reckoning on the grass. It must be well three inches at least. Yeah. On some bits of the grass. If you didn't have to do anything, it'd be quite nice, really. To stay Sitting, inside yeah, and with a drink nice hot chocolate and <laughs> eat a good book. Yes. Where did mum start there? Uh, somewhere away from the path. Guessing here then. So what are you doing now, Mum? Oh, well, now we cleared the snow. We've got to actually feed the animals snow. <laughs> There's an awful lot of snow around now. I mean, it's like two inches thick, if I'm correct. Oh, I'd say it's three, four inches on the grass, so. Yeah. Quite a lot. Awful lot. Most of it's going in my face, that's the only bad thing. <laughs> yeah. It's the only thing I don't like about snow. It illustrates the point though, no matter what the weather, if you've got animals, they've got to be dealt with. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the weather is, you've still got to get on with it. And it seems that the rabbits still don't care, whatever the weather. Yeah. <laughs> they seem pretty happy enough. Something that people don't take into account when they take on especially a small pet is, you know, are you going to be wanting to come out when it's not very nice? That's probably why most of these rabbits are here. Yeah, I'm afraid so. What is Cottontails like for, you know, a young person living here? Because you've grown up with Cottontails, it's been here for as long as you've been around. Well, it doesn't actually come in as such a major thing for me, because it's like, even though it's like a charity and all these rabbits are there, after you've been here for a little while it doesn't really mean anything. So you kind of get used to them, don't you? Yeah, it's not its not like it's anything special. It's just, well, you've got lots of rabbits, there you have it. So if there's lots of uh, cute baby bunnies, does the novelty kind of wear off? Um, yeah, because when there's like small bunnies and then you realise that they're actually, after a while, then the novelty set comes in, you just realise that they're not actually as amazing as they seem. So if any kids were going to, were really excited about having little bunnies, what would you say to them? I'd say that they're, well, probably say the same as mum that they're not toys that you shouldn't play with them around you shouldn't scare them by like picking them up and stroking them all the time you should let them have their own space and give them the right stuff and they grow up don't they yeah so you might want to watch out because um even if they're nice at the start they could turn really horrible afterwards and if it snows you do have to still be out here and, yeah, uh, and we look after them <laughs> yeah so this illustrates the the topic quite well mm. you know animals that you take on a pet you're looking after them regardless of regardless of the weather. And that's why so many come in in the winter, because people decide, actually, we don't want to look after them regardless of the weather, let's get rid of them. And then they come. There you What is it? This is tea. <laughs> no, we 
want back in, they say. <laughs> I don't think they're impressed. No, <laughs> I think you might be right. See, she can see it. I'll get another one. Oh, I think you're wasting your time getting them. Come in. I think they're all going to come in. <laughs> <laughs> 